Welcome back to the lab, folks. What we have here are the boards for the Univite guitar amplifier for this generation. Now, it's going over the schematics. It's kind of uh, showing, like showing the gate uh, after the horse had left, but I think I got the, the gain control backwards. But that's okay. We're going to have at least one more iteration of this. So that'll be corrected at that point in time. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get all the components together here, build one up and, and test it out. And I'm also going to take an opportunity to to uh, show you one of the reasons why I got my differential probe, and uh, that's uh, this this hand tech device here. You'll see clearly why it's good in, in this particular case, and, and I'm going to show you other uses of it as well over time. So I don't think I'm going to do a video specifically on it, but but I might. And what else is going to say about this? Oh yeah. So what I've uh, I've decided to do is I'm going to build it up initially. I'm going to leave out the one UF bypass capacitors. They're not always a good thing in operational amplifiers. And I think some of the stuff that we were seeing up until now was actually being caused by the bypass capacitors. So for audio frequencies, uh, it's not always a great idea to bypass your op amps, maybe at high frequencies. But uh, let's, let's have a look at that. And uh, anything else I have to say about it? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything. I just have to arrange for a heat sink along the back here. I have some thick aluminum, about a, I guess it's about an inch and a half wide and about oh, maybe about an eighth of an inch or more thick. And if I cut off a, a chunk of that about that long, that should be enough as a heat sink. Okay, so uh, let me go and build one of these up and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. We've got it all built up. I've got wires put into the terminals here so I can hook up to them. And uh, that's what I came up with for a heat sink. So that should be sufficient for our purposes here. If I was actually to put this into some sort of case or cabinet or something like that, I would attach these to whatever metal chassis I would have. And that should be provide enough heat sinking. Now I've left out those little capacitors there. Um, now we're going to hook it up. We're going to have a look at it. And what I want to do is I want to test the effective ranges of each of the tone controls, which I didn't do in the, in the last one. And I'm going to test this one maybe at 100 hertz or 1 kilohertz and then 10 kilohertz or something like that. We'll have a look to see where they have their most influence. All right, folks, let me set everything up and uh, we'll come back. All right, so we're back here. I've got uh, this variable AC load set up or 8 ohms. And I've got a uh, signal coming in here from signal generator 1 kilohertz at 50 millivolts peak to peak. I got plus or minus 15 on the supply ready to get turned on. And I just got a regular scope probe on here. And I want to show you um, what the problem is with this. And it's because both the signal generator and the scope are grounded. Let me turn on the power here. Now look at that signal there. It, uh, it's showing a 60 hertz oscillation in the background there. You have your one kilohertz, but you also have 60 hertz over that. And that looks uh, sometimes like quite a mess when you're trying to uh, study something here. So let's get this down into the middle here. And you can see it's, the signal is literally all over the place. This is being caused by this ground loop. And that's one of the reasons why I got the differential probe. So let me hook that up and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at uh, what it looks like that way. All right, one second. All right, we have our probe hooked up here, our differential probe, and it's coming in off these, just the speaker outputs. Again, everything else is the same. Uh, everything is exactly the same, so we'll turn on the power right now and uh, look at that beautiful trace. So we've gotten rid of all that 60 hertz hum, and now we can look at the signal as it truly is. So let's go and do some of the tests that I was talking about. I've got to adjust this here so we get some even clipping. So let me uh, turn down the scope a little bit there and see it's not clipping evenly. So we have to adjust this. Yeah, that's pretty even there. I'm happy with that. Okay. And uh, what are we getting out of it here? Just, just that clipping we're getting 7.5 volts RMS. So I guess you're looking at about one amp RMS going through the speakers, about seven watts or so, seven and a half watts. That's fine. Okay, um, now let's, let's try the different frequency bands here. 
So I don't even know where I have these things set. So let's let's turn this down a little bit so we don't get too much clipping involved. Yeah, this is backwards. I have to turn this way to get it to go down and this way to get it to go up. I have to fix that in the, in the final edit. All right, we're at one kilohertz. So let's see uh, what this bass control, what effect it has on it. Okay, it has a moderate effect. I'll put that in the middle and uh, see what the high frequency control has. It's got a moderate effect too, which kind of goes weird there at the end, eh? Oh well, it's only a guitar amplifier. We'll put that in the middle. Now let's see what the mid-tone, ah yeah, see, that's got the highest effect on it. So, yeah, it's working the way we want it to. Now let's, uh, let's bring this down to 100 hertz. Adjust our scope accordingly. Now let's see what, uh, does the high end have anything to do with it? No, high end doesn't affect it at all. Now what about the mid-range? Does it affect it? It has a minor effect on it, as we'd expect. One moment, please. Okay, sorry about that interruption. Now, I don't know where we were. Oh yes, we were testing the effect of the tone controls. So, and on the mid-range we checked, uh, yeah, so it's got a, a, a mild effect. Put back in the middle. And down here we have, uh, yeah, we have a full control. So now let's, uh, let's pump her up to, oh, let's go up to about four kilohertz. I think that's about the maximum bandwidth for a guitar amplifier. That's all you really need. Let's, let's do five kilohertz. And let that adjust itself there. There we go. And you see here at, at five kilohertz, as we had before, at five kilohertz, we have a little bit of that um, crossover distortion coming in. But if you look at look at the period in that, it that's probably up in the 30, 40 kilohertz or maybe even higher frequency range. So that's going to be completely inaudible in any way, shape or form. We won't have to worry about that. And now here at five kilohertz, let's try the bass control. Bass control has a little bit of effect on it, more than I was thinking, but there you go. And the mid range has a quite a big effect on it, as we would imagine. And then the high range here should have the highest effect, and it does. These things here have been running up around half a volume most of this time, and it's it's just barely warm. I don't know if you remember in the previous videos, uh, go back and have a look at them, but sometimes you'd get a, a little bit of a, a, a strangeness in the waveform, uh, you know, usually around about here or something like that. So there are some very high frequency oscillations. And leaving out these uh, bypass capacitors has gotten rid of that completely. Now, one of the other things I'm going to try in the next iteration, I've got three diodes here. So it's kind of a little bit lopsided. I've got two diodes on one side and one on the other side. Putting four diodes on would get it too much into class AB territory. So there'll be a, a lot of um, additional heat being created across here. And I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to make this an exercise in design down to a price point kind of thing. So I want to avoid having to put in extra big heat sinks and big power supplies and stuff like that to uh, run a, a class AB amplifier. So I want to keep it uh, fully class B. But what I was thinking to do would be to, uh, we have about uh, 1.8 volts across here. I was thinking maybe if I put in four Schottky diodes, it'd give me approximately the same and it would balance out both sides. So I'd have two Schottky diodes on one side and two Schottky diodes on the other side. Now we're at full output here for the last few minutes. It is getting a little bit warm there, maybe 40, 42 degrees C, so that's fine. Everything's okay. All right, folks, I think that's all I have for you today. We'll see you in the next video. Um, until then, bye-bye.